Welcome back to SmartHelping.com. Well, I uploaded this video two days ago and realized my mic had been muted, which is super frustrating. It happens to me maybe once every 50 videos, and I have to go back and redo it. So, oh, we're going to go through this again. And so the model, the model I've got here is is to try to measure. Um, two different scenarios. The first scenario is if you, well, it, and it assumes you have some kind of debt, and so it, it tries to measure what your biggest investment value is in a future at a future point in time. Uh, if you pay off all of your loans now, and then invest, if you have anything left, invest that, or don't pay off any of the loans, continue to pay the monthly debt service. And invest a lot more up front. So obviously the main factors that are going to affect this are number one, the interest rate of the expected investment that you're doing. And then the total terms remaining, the years remaining on the debt, the balance remaining and the interest rates of all the different debt. There's up to five loans here you could enter. And based on that, it'll give you a summary of the investment value in each scenario at a given point in the future. And ideally you want to do the one that has the highest investment value. Um, so we'll go through and I'll show you how to adjust all the assumptions and what the model, the summaries show you and everything else. Uh, but first I need to tell you the main, uh, we are assuming that the, the annual interest rate on this investment is compounding monthly. We're also assuming that, you know, because you're paying off all this debt up front in the, the first scenario, you don't have any debt service. So that future debt payments that you're paying on the other scenario, you could actually just reinvest it. So let's say you're paying off the loans over time, so you're starting off with $270 a month. Well, in this scenario, you don't have that 270 a month because you paid off all the debt, so you can theoretically then have that cash available to invest. So this will grow faster and compared to this one, but uh, you'll see that the, the scenario where you're paying off the loans now starts at a lower investment. The scenario where you're paying off loans over time starts at a higher investment. This one will grow slower this one grows faster because they both use the same investment rate, annual rate of return, but you obviously can invest that debt service. So this one grows faster and you you can see how the race happens. And it's basically how fast can you get up to your uh, larger investment where you didn't pay off the debt? How fast can you get up to that level? Um, and in the debt free version. So, Let's start to, and then there's an annual summary here, but let's start to play with the assumptions because that helps usually explain. So let's just say, you know, you're going to start with the current month. You're going to start with your current cash available, uh, cash needed for reserves. So it's basically saying you used to have this much, but you, you want to keep at least this much in your, you know, checkings or savings or whatever. And then um, you're going to then adjust the current remaining balance of your, all your loans, the years remaining on those loans and interest rate as well as the payments per year. And then this schedule kind of shows you, these are just regular amortization schedules here. Uh, so once you have that information, you then can say, okay, well, what's my total current debt balance of all the loans? 46,000. Um, so in the case where if I'm not investing, uh, if I'm, if, I'm not paying back the loans. I can invest $85,000 up front because I'm not going to put that money into the loans. I'm just going to put it into an investment instead and pay off the loans over time. So $85,000 there. The second scenario where you're paying back the loans over time, you can only invest $39,000. That's just simply doing your total amount, less the reserve, less all your current debt. So it's saying you still can, even if you pay off all your debt now, you still have some left over in this scenario. If you end up with zero left over, this scenario will still grow at the pace of whatever the debt service is in your scenario where you're paying off loans over time. So I've tried to keep everything equal as much as possible so you can really just adjust the variables and see how that affects the investment value and keep it 
So it makes sense. So you can really see, obviously, if the, the interest rates are higher, it's going to make it so that you, it, it, you're paying more uh, debt service every month, which is meaning you could actually use that money to grow this, the, the scenario where you're paying off the loans right now faster. So let's just adjust. Number one, let's start with, let's say we've got this loan. Let's say it's, it's at a higher interest rate. So instead of 4%, it's at 10. And before we even change it, look at this. So right now it says in five years, the investment of paying off the loans now is 50 set worth 57,000. The investment paying off the loans over time is at 92,000. So 57, 92. So if we raise the interest rate, this 92 should stay the same. Let's see what's the term on this 30 years. Yeah, so that 92,000, I don't think it should change. This 57 will be higher. So let's go ahead, let's raise this interest rate to 10%. Now, if we go back to our summary, yeah, there you go. So this this number didn't change, which it shouldn't. Um, but this number is now higher. It's at 59,008 instead of at a 4%, it was at 57. So it gained more, and that's because with the higher debt service, that means you technically have more money to invest if you did not have that debt service and had paid it off right away. This doesn't change. Remaining debt's 40,542. If we put this to 10%, you could see it's a little bit higher because with more interest, you're not paying it off as quick. Now you can also do this difference here of negative 7,000, and that's actually taking into account the, the debt owed. So it's saying, well, this is your investment value, but if you take into account the 41,000 you still in debt and net it all out, you actually have less money than this scenario where you paid off all the loans already. And that's after five years. And you can adjust these to say seven. Oh, this could say seven years, 40. It's just one, two, it's just four different uh, year. You can pick through one through 42 years and see what the values are. And you can see paying off the loans now wins in all of these scenarios. Um, now let's so that so you kind of understand the the debt side of it and what variables will change in in effect that now let's look at the investment now this initial investment the higher this is the better off you are at possibly paying off your loans over time because you can gain this sooner and I'll just show you here so let's say this is at two percent let's put it at ten percent. Now, all the winning scenarios are paying off loans over time. And that's because it's now much, it doesn't give you the the amount of extra payment you're putting on the when you pay off the loans right away. The extra amount of debt service is not enough to outweigh this annual rate of return that you're getting. So it just can't catch up even if you pay off, even if you net the position and say, okay, I've got 133, I've still got 41,000 left of debt after five years. Well, that still is $10,000 more than if I did paid off all the loans originally and then just earned from the smaller investment amount. And you can see the net difference over time, 5, 8, 20, 35 years. You could go up to 42 years here. And so the higher this is, the more it negates the effect, the, the negative effect of paying off the loans has and means you should really take that money and invest it now instead of trying to just um, get rid of all your, your loans. So it's a race. You can see it's a race. That's the easiest way I could think of it. And you're racing to see who has the highest investment balance when all the debt is done. And that's what this calculation right here does. This just looks at um, once the debt's all paid off. So after all the terms here, you've got these are 30 year terms. So it's going to look at you can see here, year 30, if we go down right there. So it's saying, yep, there you, you've made your last debt payment in 2048. Here's what your investment values are. And
and that translates over to here. Now let's make sure this is paying us off, paying off loan now. So this is actually, let me change this good thing. I went over this and so investment value. Oh yeah, that's right. So paying off, pay off, that should be pay off. Investment value payoff now scenario. And this is this is investment value of paying loans back over time. I had to pl I played with this a lot these two columns to figure out what actually makes sense to measure over time and that those were the two things that made sense to check um, what the values were at the time of, of being debt free because at this point the investments are then just going to grow at whatever the investment rate is and you can see if we go to the visuals you can see that these are both growing at the same percentage rate but whichever one's higher after 30 years so you see 18 at 2048 right here since the annual ROI for um, where you're paying back that service is higher at that point there's no other factors that are going to affect it so the investments just grow at the same rate but whichever one's higher is going to obviously be more from there and then this is your remaining debt schedule just shows you what the debt is over time based on you you know loans getting paid back and the interest rates uh, we've also got uh, difference in investment value payoff now so you can see it does have some value, or, you know, it's close here, but then you just, as soon as that uh, debt's paid off and they're both equal, because the one is greater, uh, paying back the loans over time is, is greater, that this difference just grows more and more as you go through time. So it's not always, and this really, this model shows it's not always about what the interest rate is relative to the, the annual percentage rate. Even if this number is relatively lower than interest rate on your debt if the debt amounts are not that much and you and it's not having that much of an effect it might still be better to pay off the loans over time even if the interest rates are higher than your annual percentage rate and that's also going to play into effect of the relative amount of cash you have to invest in your scenario compared to the total debt service that you're gonna have to pay on on your loans and out of time so i mean i think that's kind of i've explained this as best as I can all the dynamics and you can then you kind of see how it all works um, these schedules are all dynamic and you can see here if we go to the scenario where you're paying off loans over time you can see the starting debt service is 310 as you go down here let's put this one at say 10 year term left instead of 30 so now you can see as you go down the debt service changes once the one loan is paid off and now you can start to invest some of that into here so that's all happening dynamically so you can see this you're adding 132 a month because you no longer have to pay off that loan and that's how we're trying to you know hold everything as equal as possible given what you can possibly do with the cash flow available and then here you finally pay off the next loan you can now put 300 dollars a month into your investment and then once you pay off the last one, it's then just going to grow at the rate. And you can see the payoff loans now is using all of that debt service. All 354 is investing every month into this. Because it's assuming since you don't have to pay this debt off, you've paid it off all at once, you can then free up this cash flow to, to invest it every month. That's why this starts to grow much faster than the payoff loans over time. And, it, it, and the ability of it to grow, if it can grow faster and get to a high enough amount, before you've paid off all your loans then this scenario wins and it's all again it's all dependent on the investment rates and the interest rates the loan amount the cash amounts and you can see this also ends when all the debts off you now just grow out whatever the investment was able to get to now this shows your monthly net return so this is obviously there's no debt service so your net return is just whatever your interest rate is compounded every month based on the annual rate of return so if we go back to our uh, annual comparison, now let's go to the net investment. 
this one. So you can see here the scenario where you have no debt service, you're just the monthly cash flow you're getting is always higher because um, there's just no, well, it's not always, I guess it would be, it, it depends, but here it's higher because the debt service in the other scenario is much lower than the investment amount that it's getting. Now, if you raise to say 12% or something crazy, you can see now it's just, you could barely even tell the difference. And then obviously at that high of a rate, you never catch up with the, the, payoff now scenario and the the scenario wins to pay back debt over time i mean that so the high level takeaways are the higher this interest current the higher you think your expected annual rate of return is going to be over time the more it should lean you to paying off your debt over time the lower this is the better chance you have of paying off now it's all relative so the lower this is relative to all your interest rates on your loans the better chance you have to pay off um, the loans first because the loans are going to have a bigger effect on the investment value than the, the annual rate of return and so all that the gray area in the middle is where this model actually takes uh, you know becomes valuable because every single person's scenarios are different and you know, there's a lot of different things that can, it's not always black and white as far as, you know, just do the one with the higher annual rate of return. It really depends on the specific scenario, the cash being invested, the remaining uh, debt on the loans. And, and so it requires a model to actually do the math out. Uh, finally, we do have a, a weighted average cost of capital. So this just says, you know, all your loans, um, the average interest rate is 5.98%. And all that's doing is just summing up all the loans and then taking an average a weighted average for that based on the interest rate of each loan so if a, a higher loan has a higher interest rate that interest rate on the higher amount will have affect this weighted average cost of capital more and you can see this actually i've done this all the way through so as you pay off debt this weighted average cost of capital changes which could be helpful for you to look at uh, in the future when measuring possible scenarios then this chart here just shows the investment values at whatever year in the future you put here, and it just does, you know, pay off loans over time value versus pay off loans now. And that's about it. So uh, this model, I will uh, sell it. It's going to cost a one-time fee of $45. If you want to purchase it, just go to the description, description box below in the YouTube video. And... Um, I'll email it over to you. Other than that, have a great weekend, 4th of July weekend, and hopefully I never forget to put my audio on on the mic again because I really, I just lost a couple days of time and now i got to re-upload the video. Um, but it's my fault, apologies, but this video, the audio, I double, triple checked it, so it should be good. Alright, have a great weekend.